Ladies and gentlemen, the Shrek Gaming Telecom video, the GeForce GTX 965M has arrived. It's not exactly had the largest fanfare from NVIDIA, but it's out nevertheless, and it shouldn't come as too much of a surprise to you, considering that it was leaked by NVIDIA, including, of course, its name in driver updates. And secondly, because the desktop GTX 960s are arriving pretty soon. This is also an article if you want more details, um, but it's pretty simple stuff anyway. So, there's an official blurb release for this GPU, and it reads as follows. The GeForce GTX 960 brings a desktop class gaming performance in to the netbook. Driving impressive gameplay at ultra settings at 1080p resolutions, now you can take on every game with blazing fast performance, exclusive gaming technologies, plus the improved battery life you need to play longer and unplugged. Really? Every game? Okay. I would like to now play Crisis, we'll now test it with Crisis 3, and let's see how that goes, or even The Witcher, given the, Witcher 3, given the leaked, uh, announced, should I say, specification, or leaked on the bloody mind today. So the basic specs of the card aren't particularly impressive. You're looking at 128-bit memory interface running at 5,000 megahertz effective. That's not exactly super duper impressive. You're getting about uh, 80 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, and it's 128 bit, as I've said, much like the GTX 960 desktop uh, GPU. With, but the difference is it's running at 5000 megahertz rather than the desktop 7010. Them 10 megahertz are going to make a huge difference in raw performance, don't you know? Um, as in terms of memory, the amount of VRAM, it's looking like it's going to be up to 4 gigs. Now, those are the models that's been sent out, but it's not really unreasonable to think we're going to be seeing 2 gigabyte models in the not-too-distant future, particularly for those who are buying on a budget. And it's surprising the price premium people will pay for 4 gigabytes, uh, particularly with NVIDIA cards, which is a bit weird at the moment in terms of the way they're kind of uh, structured in their VRAM. Uh, supposedly, the GTX 960 is going to have 2 gigs, so it's a bit weird in that respect. Anyway, regarding the rest of the specifications, it's going to be running at a base clock of 944 MHz, but will support uh, GPU Boost 2. As for what those GPU Boost 2s were going to get you, well, in terms of raw clock speed, who knows? Of course, it's going to depend on the laptop manufacturer, how much cooling they give the uh, processor, uh, BIOS, and other uh, usual um, suspects. But it's going to have 1,024 CUDA cores, which lends itself considering the desktop derivative is going to have 1,024+. plus. Um, obviously, they've not really specified yet, but um, it kind of makes sense. In terms of raw performance, however, you might be saying to yourself, well, gee, that's not as impressive as the 1,344 cores that make up the GTX 870M. And you would be right in terms of raw numbers. It's certainly a few num uh, certainly considerably less, particularly when you consider, furthermore, that it's running at 192-bit memory interface. The difference is that the performance is actually higher on the Maxwell architecture in upwards of 965. Why? Quite simple improvements to, well, basically the architecture. So we have not only color compression and other types of compression in, uh, built into the GPU, but obviously the general other improvements to the architecture include improved caches, in other words, larger caches, and so on and so forth. So that lends itself to improved performance overall. What does that mean to you as a gamer? Well, despite the fact that your friends may point and laugh and say, hey, you've got fewer CUDA cores than me, you can point and laugh because you're going to get higher frame rates for them. How much higher? Well, it kind of depends on the game, as one would expect. But it's looking to be a fairly healthy lead, which isn't too shabby. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. It's a fairly brief one, but I did want to cover this, considering there's a lot of interest at the moment for NVIDIA. I do also want to follow up on another point I made regarding the GTX 960 for the desktop. I personally believe, um, and this is asked by a couple of people on Facebook, um, you know, they're kind of saying, well, NVIDIA pricing's a bit high, well, do remember that the leaked, um, leaked by retailers, and I'm sure NVIDIA are not too happy about that, but remember those prices were in uh, Australian dollars, and they're not super duper finalised, so in other words, Australia dollars, they like, always pay more for A, and for B, then you've got the fact that the prices aren't finalised. 
The second point is I don't really think it's a good idea to buy any card at the moment until AMD's GPUs are announced formally and at the very least we can get some basic reviews. For the simple reason, as one could imagine, you just don't know what the performance is going to be like. So even if AMD's GPUs turn out to not be as fast as Nvidia's, at least you know for certainty that that's the case. On the other hand, if AMD's GPUs slap Nvidia's, then you know you're going to get better performance. And plus, if the GPUs, which I would prefer, to be totally honest, if they're both roughly even in terms of performance, in other words, game A performs better on Nvidia and game B performs better on AMD, and therefore you've got to make a decision based on, say, technology, for example, do you prefer free sync or G-Sync, do you want Mantle, and so on and so on, then hopefully it will start an actual price war, which is a good thing for us as consumers. You don't want a situation where, you know, one manufacturer just wins because if you do that prices remain artificially high and that's why the Maxwell parts for example the GTX 980 had quite a price premium at the start whereas on the other hand if AMD had been the ones that had already been out the gate and already had a very competitive part for the Maxwell things would have been a bit different as we've seen however AMD have been very aggressive with their pricing cuts particularly on the 290 the 290x and the 295x2 so there is definitely some competition out there anyway with that said hopefully you've enjoyed the video uh, do check out the article if you want some graphs and some links and stuff like that but for now i'll leave you to it take care and bye for now